Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of my tutorial series on how to make an accurate gravity simulation using C++ and SFML. In this episode, we're gonna be populating our update physics function here with some mathematics that I'll try and explain to you and break down some physics as well. Um, if this is your first uh, time watching the series, you can either go watch the first episode if you wanna just watch the class and rendering setup for SFML. If you wanna learn more about the physics and math part, you're more savvy with SFML, just keep watching from here. I'll leave a link to this initial starting code in the description below so you can just uh, follow along easily. So um, in summary here, we've got a particle that has a position and velocity so it can move around and it's, it's also drawable, it's got a shape to it. Uh, and we've also got this gravity source which uh, is fixed and drawable. So what we're gonna wanna do in our update physics function is we're basically wanna, gonna wanna implement Newton's laws of physics as it applies to this. So here are the two factors we wanna consider. The particle flying along is gonna have two things acting on it, two things making it move or making it change position or velocity. The first one is that it's gonna to wanna to keep going the velocity it's currently going. It's gonna to wanna to keep traveling in that direction. So if we don't introduce any gravity, it should just keep going in a straight line, whatever its velocity is, right? If it's still, it'll stay still. If it's moving, it'll keep moving. The second thing is if there's a gravity source or some, some external force, which we're gonna be implementing, right? Uh, it's going to attract it. It's going to cause an acceleration Another word of acceleration, another way of saying that is a change in its velocity. So if it's traveling like this and there's some gravity source pulling it, it's gonna bend, right? It's, its velocity is going to change. So there's a few ways to do this. Uh, intuitively, you can do it using trigonometry and angles, but it's really slow. It's incredibly slow for computers. So we're gonna be looking at it. Um, we're gonna be using Pythagorean theorem and some vectors and normalizing vectors. If you're familiar with those things, great. If you're not, don't worry about it. I'm gonna be giving a little breakdown of each concept as we go. So the first thing to consider right, is that we're going to have somewhere in space, we're going to have our, you know, our planet here, right, um, and we'll call it S for source, right, and we're going to end up having some particles somewhere, we'll call it P for particle, and basically what we want to do is we don't care where the source or the particle is in, in the world relative to other things, you know, where they are in the universe, it doesn't matter, we just care relative to each other, where are they, right, so what we're going to want to figure out is we're going to figure out the distance, well, we need, we need a couple of things, but we're going to want to figure out the distance between the two, the true distance. Uh, and to do that, we're going to start with the uh, x distance and the y distance. And then we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this other side is. And the x and y distances are also going to be useful for some other stuff. So let's go ahead and just figure out the x and y distances. So all we're going to do to do that, to figure that out, is the difference between the positions of P and S. So let's go ahead and do that. Right. So in this update physics function, we passed in our gravity source. So what we're going to do, we're going to go float uh, distance x equals, and we'll go with s dot get position dot x. So the x position of our source minus just the current local position of the particle, right? Because we're, we're in the particle class here, so just position dot x. There we go. I'm going to hit control D on my keyboard to duplicate that, and we'll go ahead and do the same for y. I'll just change all these x's to y's. There we go. Now I've got this distance. Fantastic. So we're gonna use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this what the side length is here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and the way we're gonna go ahead and do that is we're gonna go and just use a simplified C, right? And C is this, this hypotenuse here. And it's gonna be equal to, I'll, I'll just call it distance, right? Uh, and it's just gonna be the square root, okay? Of A squared plus B squared. Well, A and B in this case is our distance X and distance Y. So we'll just go ahead and put those in here. Um, a squared, squaring by definition is just multiplication by yourself. So we got distance x times distance x plus distance y times distance y. So right here, distance, this, this is now what we have effectively in this, in this float called distance is this true, true length between these two points, right? How far apart are they actually in space? No, within our simulation. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do might seem a little bit weird, but I'll, I'll try and explain why. So let's just say, let's, let's give some numbers to these distances. Let's just say this is three, this is four, this is five. Okay, there we go. What we want to do is we want to divide all of the, all the parts in this triangle. We divide all those side lengths by some number. And whatever number we pick, I'll explain how we're going to choose in a second. Whatever number we pick, it basically has to mean that once we've divided all those, right, set those new side lengths, that the, the long length here, the, the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse should have a length of one, essentially. So that's a fancy way of saying we're going to divide everything by five, 
in, in this example, right? We're going to divide everything by the hypotenuse. And this is called vector normalization. And it's basically a way to get around. I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but it's a way of getting around using angles, right? Because now what this red line and the, the green and purple, what effectively this is, uh, is this is the direction. It's, it's a little pointing vector. That's a direction from the particle to the source. And that's really useful because we want to apply gravity as an attraction from the particle to the source. So without having to use a bunch of trigonometry, we can kind of just use this, this vector right here. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? So we've got this distance, right? We just want to divide everything by the distance. Now, um, some of you who are math savvy might recognize this. If uh, if not, you can you know Google it or just take my word for it. Um, what we can go ahead and do is we can, we can calculate something called the inverse distance, which is just going to be one over distance, one divided by distance, okay? Uh, I should equal sign there. So inverse distance is just one divided by distance. Now, if we multiply a number by inverse distance, it's the same as just dividing by distance. Okay, so just take my word for that. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna have some uh, float normalized x, right? And normalized x is just gonna be inverse distance times distance x. And all we're doing here is dividing by distance, but it's more efficient because now we're only providing, we're only doing one division and two multiplications. And division is a lot slower than multiplication, so th this is a good optimization to make. Okay, uh, even if it might be a little unintuitive at first, but it'll it'll save us some speed. So we'll go ahead and Control D to duplicate this. We'll go ahead and normalize Y, normalize X, just like so. Change those uh, change those X's to Y's. Uh, now we've got these normalized values. Okay, now what we're gonna want to do is keep in mind what does this represent right here? Well, this is basically um, a vector of length one which points from the um, particle to the source or the source of the particle, depending what order we subtract these, but, but at least it, it's in that right direction, okay? And that, that's all that matters for now. Um, so all we can do now really is just multiply it by the strength of gravity. And what that will give us is a vector, which is acceleration, which we can then just go ahead and add to with the, um, the, the velocity, okay? There's a lot of stuff there, but we'll implement it here. You'll, you'll see how, 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 how I mean it. So we'll go float. Um, acceleration X and we're going to do a few things here. So I'm going to go ahead and write it partially and then we'll, we'll amend it in a second. So it's really going to be our normalized vector, right? Times the strength of gravity. Well, the strength of gravity, we'll just leave that as S dot get strength for now. Okay. Just the normalized vector times the strength of gravity. And we'll hit control D to duplicate that. And then and then just change the x's to y's there. Now, um, the astute among you might have noticed that, okay, now we're taking our normalized vector times get strength of gravity. What this really means is that gravity is going to have the same strength no matter how far away you are from our attracting source, which is not physically accurate, right? You know, in the real world, if you're really far from Earth, well, the strength of Earth's gravity is going to be pretty small compared to if you're standing on the surface, right? So we need to account for that. The way we're going to account for that drop off, so to speak, is using the physically accurate law called the inverse square law. And basically it states the following, right? If you have, you're some distance from planet or gravity source and gravity affects you by some amount. If you go double that distance, gravity's effect will be decreased by a factor of four. One divided by two squared, which is four. So gravity strength is one fourth. So how are we going to calculate this? Well, there's a few ways of doing it. Technically, we could take one divided by distance times distance. That's one divided by radius squared. Okay, that, that fits the inverse square law, but that's a waste of uh, computing power because we've already computed one divided by distance. So all we need to do is multiply uh, inverse distance. We, we just need to square inverse distance. And looking on the screen right now, you should be able to see mathematically why that is. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and go float inverse square drop off equals inverse square distance times inverse square distance Just like that or uh, inverse distance times inverse distance. Fantastic. Um, I'm now going to go ahead and basically just multiply our normalized X and normalized Y uh, and all the gravity. We're going to multiply in there the strength of uh, what it should be once we account for inverse square drop off. There we go. Fantastic. So let's recap here. We've figured out the acceleration correctly, what it should be, but we haven't done anything to the position, right? All we've done is figure out what the acceleration should be. We need to apply the acceleration to our velocity and then apply our velocity to our position. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go val dot x plus equals, or we're just going to go ahead and add 
our acceleration x. I'm going to control D to duplicate that. And to our y velocity, we're just going to add the y acceleration. We're also going to go position.x plus equals velocity.x, right? And just update our position based on our velocity. And there is one final thing we need to do now. What we're doing here effectively is we're updating the, the position, right? Makes sense. Um, but this position is just a vector. This vector is just hanging out. We're not actually using that vector to set the shape, right? Because now we're, we're moving this, this, the numbers in this position ve uh, vector around, but we're not actually moving the shape. So to move the shape, I'm just going to add one little thing here in our render function. And it's just going to be uh, s dot set position. Uh, and we'll go ahead and just use our position. There we go. There we go. That, that'll save us some, some hassle later. Just trust me. So. Now we've got that set up. I believe our entire, entire function here, everything is set up. We're good to go. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and actually make some, I actually did change the, the size here as well uh, from the last video. So just changed 1600 and 1000 here. But yeah, that's in, that's in the boilerplate code in the description. Uh, or not boilerplate, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, we're going to go ahead and actually declare now a gravity source and a particle and uh, render them and update the physics and just test to make sure everything's working. So we're going to go gravity source source it's a constructor obviously so this constructor is going to take in a position i'm going to just go in the middle of the screen okay uh, 800 500 okay fantastic uh, it's going to take in a few other things as well i think it takes in a strength yeah for strength so you're going to have to tweak and mess around to see kind of what strengths work i'm going to just start with like 2000 and these numbers are completely relative to the size of the pixels and, and all those things so if, if you really want a robust simulation not dependent on that you're going you're gonna to have to do some division and stuff but this really is just a intro video so i'm not gonna not gonna concern myself with that so let's go ahead and, and move on here we got a source right we're also going to want a particle uh, oops, particle, particle. Uh, and this is going to take some, some things in, right? So position wise, I'm going to go ahead and put it slightly below uh, and to the left. So to put it to the left, we'll go less X because less X goes left, right? Uh, and then we'll go with more Y because more Y goes down, right? Because the upper left corner is the um, zero, zero. So we'll just go with like uh, 600 or something like that. Uh, that looks that looks good. That, that seems legit. Uh, and we're missing a few things as well. Okay. So we're also going to need a initial velocity. And again, you're going to have to tweak this around a bit and, and see kind of what works. Uh, I'll start with like five with the X. So that's like going sideways to the right, right? Uh, and Y velocity. I'm not going to make it go up or down just at first. Anyways, we got that set up. Now we need to go ahead and render and update physics. So I'm going to grab my source here. I'm going to copy that. So uh, we're going to window dot draw. Uh, oh, no, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Uh, we're going to go source.render, and then we're going to pass in the window. Uh, oops, pass in window. Just like that. There we go. Uh, and then we'll also go particle.render, and we're going to pass in our window. Let's actually not update physics. Let's just run this and see that everything uh, draws properly. Okay, we got these two. Uh, and they're, they're kind of small, actually, these points. I'm going to just increase the size here really quickly of both of these. So I'm going to go to set radius. I'll go gravity source. I'll go with 10. Uh, and particle, I'll go with eight, just so they're a bit easier to see on the video. We got this set up, fantastic. Well, now we're just gonna call update physics before actually rendering them. So we'll go uh, particle.updatePhysics, and we're just gonna pass in, remember, our one source there, just like so. Uh, and uh, let's, let's go ahead and render this, moment of truth. Let's see, let's see how it looks. Uh, and you can see here, looks like our gravity source is a bit weak. Uh, our particle just kind of zoomed past it. Or maybe the gravity source is too strong. Let's just go ahead and increase the speed of the particle, actually. Let's go with 10 here. Let's see how this works. And this is going to be a bit of trial and error to see kind of what works. That definitely goes way too far past. I'm going to go ahead and move the particle. I'm going to move the particle down a bit. And I'm going to increase the strength of the gravity source. We'll go with, uh, we'll with 7,000, okay? Let's see how this is. Particle zooms past it, okay? A little too fast. So maybe decrease the speed of the particle. For, again, a bit finicky, right? You're going to have to mess around with this. That's a bit better, okay. Yeah, that looks like a pretty stable orbit to me. It's not gonna, it's not going anywhere. And there you have it. That's it. It's that simple. I mean, uh, I hope the, the physics and math part of it was understandable. If you have any questions about the physics or math part, um, or even the coding part, if I made a mistake or there's some kind of better practice I should be doing, please do leave a comment. And uh, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. And if you have any questions or anything, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I'll, I'll reply as, as best as I can to explain to you uh, if there's any misunderstanding in the video. Anyways, the final code will be in the description below, and I thank you all for your time. Have a great day. Bye.